Greetings everyone, my name is Sadu Choma for Financial Inside Zambia and right now I am with Monsieur Linley who is part of the Mauritius Economic Development Board delegation that was sent to Zambia for prospection and uh, looking at some of the industries that we have. Monsieur Linley, how are you doing? Fine, fine. I would like to thank you for your warm welcome. Thank you. Hope you're enjoying Zambia. Yes, yes, but a bit short. Three days a bit short. I think I uh, need to come back again. No, so, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So you are representing jewellery manufacturers yeah. from Mauritius and you toured some of the jewellery manufacturers in Zambia. What are some of the things you've seen, opportunities for collaboration, improvement, and, and what is the lay of the land that you've... Well, it's a big, there's a big, big job to do because it's a new uh, industry there. Uh, there are, I met some few jewellers with a great uh, intention, great uh, willing of uh, doing good things. Uh, you have a lot of raw materials here, gold, diamond, precious stones. Uh, I think more value added should be added to your products. Okay. And what do you see in terms of gaps that can be filled gaps by Mauritius? Is, I think, and organization Zambia. of the jewelers, uh, training. I think the, 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 the sensible part is training because everybody, everyone is doing like a trial and error. Uh, I think uh, proper training will boost the industry. And also standardization. Yes, yeah, standardization. Uh, how, I think have to review all the legislation that uh, regulate this sector. Maybe implement new new rules and regulation. Okay. And maybe revise the old one. Yeah. And also, what about taxation? Do you think tax? I've been a bit surprised to see the amount of taxation on the jewel, even for the export sector. Uh, it's a barrier. Uh, too much tax kills the tax. So uh, if you have tax on raw materials, you have tax on tools and equipment, and now you have tax on exportation. So this, this doesn't encourage uh, investors to, 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 to get into this sector. Yeah. It, it, especially if it's a promising sector with all the raw materials you got there. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Len, it's been a same pleasure. Thank you so much. Same. Right. Thank so you. It's been Chuma for Financial Inside Zambia. Get to know. Greetings everyone, my name is Seri Chuma for Financial Insights Zambia and right now I am joined by Imanga Kayama who is Director of Money Creatives who are responsible for hosting and managing the visitations by the Mauritius Economic Development Board. Uh, Imanga, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you Cedric, how are you? I'm good, glad to have you. So, Happy you, to be here. You've hosted uh, the, the, the team for two days now and you've actually facilitated them interacting with some of the businesses and seeing the landscape. What have you seen and what has been your experience from interacting with them and what do you think should be done to create more synergies? Okay, um, so the Mauritians, the companies from Mauritius have been here since Sunday and uh, for a two-day forum, trade and investment forum between Mauritius and Zambia. And uh, mostly these companies are coming from the textile and apparel, uh, jewelry sector, light engineering and construction, as well as uh, food processing. And what we've seen is that there's definitely opportunity, which is why they selected Zambia, because of the similarity in, uh, in economic uh, value uh, for development of the nations. So in visiting the, uh, the counterparts, the Zambian counterparts, there's, uh, there's room for collaboration because Mauritius is a more developed uh, country in terms of policy that Zambia has much to learn from. And so um, in as much as uh, the, Mauritian, the companies from Mauritius are ready to go um, with these deals, there is a lot that we can learn from Zambia about how to actualize it. Um, unfortunately, it's not plug and play, but what we have learned is that there is a lot in terms of policy uh, to see results that still needs to be done on the Zambian side. Right. Imanga, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. This right. so has been Sadu Chuma for Financial Inside Zambia. Get to know. Greetings, I'm here at the Mauritius Zambia Investment Forum and I'm joined by Mr. Lawrence who was the opening speaker and he wants to share just a few thoughts about the event. Mr. Lawrence, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for the interview. 
Glad to have you. So tell us just a bit about your, your, what you talked about in the presentation as well as the event in general. All right. Um, I stand here today, this, this afternoon, as the president of the Lusaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry, which is uh, a member of the Zambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I spoke on behalf of the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, what we were uh, trying to bring across uh, is an interesting fact that uh, most people seem to uh, not grasp and that's the fact that Zambia has a unique position uh, to play its role as a regional trade investment hub, a regional business hub, uh, agricultural hub, educational centre, uh, pharmaceutical centre, and we're looking at it also now being an IT hub as well in the region. And why, why do we say this? When you're a hub, it means that you're basically at the centre of something. Okay. In this case, Zambia is at the center of eight countries. The DRC, Angola, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Malawi, and Tanzania. But we tend to forget that we have this one beautiful water body called Lake Tanganyika, and at the top of Lake Tanganyika we have um, Burundi and Rwanda. That gives us 10 countries. And then, by extension, and you'll note that I did say that we're surrounded by eight plus seven. So by extension, uh, we then have uh, South Africa, which also with South Africa, we have Lesotho and Swaziland. And then we go on to Kenya, we go on to Uganda. And then today we discover we have Mauritius who is also looking, looking to us. And each one of those countries needs something. Now, what we need to capitalize on is the fact that we are the most land-linked country in the world because by and large it's 15 countries plus that surround us in one way or another. And, and there, with that kind of information, there has to be a paradigm shift in the way that we, we address business, the way we address even just being a Zambian themselves. Because the thing is that since 1964, we've had two elements that have been crippling our growth. And that's one, the dependency syndrome. And dependency syndrome brought about by what's called poly business. If I'm not politically connected, if I don't have this connection or that connection, I'll never get any business done. But we see that when there was a change, when there was a change in the thinking and the paradigm change in government administration, they came about and say, private sector, this is August 2021. You take lead in economics transformation. You take lead in um, uh, resuscitating the economy. It's not us, government. What we're doing is we're going to work with you. What we're going to do for you to make this possible is bring out some reforms in the industrial policy, the trade policy, the manufacturing policy, our export policy, so that we now become competitive. But you as businessmen now need to begin to start thinking about how do I begin to interact? So organizations like the Chamber of Commerce ourselves begin what we call market linkages, creating an enabling environment for businesses who are linked to us. Because by virtue of the fact that we are linked to the Zambia Chamber of Commerce, it gives us now the fact that we are linked also to the SADC Business Council, the Commerce Business Council, and within those council, regional councils, we have chambers of commerce also, who are part of the Pan-African Chamber of Commerce, and then with that, we are part of the International Chambers of Commerce. Now, that linkage, that linkage gives us access to 45 million business houses under the International Chambers of Commerce all over the world. And you cannot sit in Osaka and say, I don't have any business connection. When I am producing soya beans, when I am producing sorghum, I don't have a market. You do. It's just that you don't have access to information. And once you get the information from us, we will help you get access to that market. This is why now we become this thing of saying, we need to move and realize that we are actually a regional hub, because to do anything, it is south, north, or west. You have to pass through Zambia, yeah. and so what? And then 
you, we've just learned recently, if you learned, remember at the beginning of the year, um, there was a situation and it's still unfortunately the adverse effects of climate change has affected some of our brothers in East Africa, Kenya, when they came to look at us for food. We try to politicize this instead of monetizing it. Because if you learn to begin to monetize the misfortunes of people around you, you will help them uplift, but you need to gain. And this is where now also the process through agricultural development, agro processing industry comes in. Because once you've got that going and you are feeding those people what you're doing, even the extractive industry will become dependent on that. So the opportunity is great. The youth who are looking for opportunities also now have to be creative in their thinking to stop looking at saying, I'm going for a job. They have now begin to say, what can I do to provide a solution in the environment that I am in? So this is what. Now to augment what I'm talking about, we have, uh, since the time we came into office, started a process of having business expos. And on the 27th of May, um, 2022, uh, Honorable Molenga Chipoka came to officiate at the Lusaka uh, Business Expo. And during that expo, we made a pronouncement on which he followed up and endorsed it to say that as a Chamber of Commerce, as a private sector body, we are standing and pushing and advocating for Lusaka to become a regional trade and investment hub, to be a business hub. And we have seen activities now pulling into that. And as we do this, as we take it advantage and ensure that this enabling environment is even made into a better form, format for all of us, we will then be able to see that we'll make life much better because we'll have a sustainable economy as we service the industry. This last expo that we had, we had a number of uh, countries that came in, seven, which was amazing for us, who were ready and are still looking for opportunities to engage with our business community. So whether it's at the domestic level or international or regional level, we have the opportunity to make a difference for our country. And you as the press, the media, we need you to be also part of that, to make this clarion call to say, every Zambian needs to take ownership of the country and make it become this business hub that is important. Let's stop waiting for other people to do things for us. Let's start doing things ourselves. Let's not look at what the system was before. Let's look at what we can influence the system to be that we want. Let's make it the Zambia we want, the Africa that we are looking for. That's what we want. No. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's yeah. been a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Yeah. This has been Saru Chuma for Financial Insights Zambia. Get to know.